Greetings everyone, my name is Jonathan Bailey and I'm from the site Plagiarism Today which can be found at PlagiarismToday.com And I really thought we were done with this one. Um, you know, yesterday I wrote an 1800 word article and spent an eight minute and spun an eight minute video about the whole oatmeal slash funny junk controversy that's been going on and I really thought that was going to be it. I thought I was going to say my piece and when it was all said and done it would well be all said and done. I didn't think there was going to be uh, much else to add to it. I, the, the, realistically I didn't think anything else was going to come of this. I figured it was just going to be a story. They were going to do the little fundraiser. Everything was going to be ha good and it was just going to kind of die into obscurity. Kind of like it did the first time ten months ago. I was kind of looking for a pattern. Um, this wasn't the pattern. Uh, long story short, what happened here is the recap the entire situation really fast. Uh, Matt Inman runs a or creates a web comic called The Oatmeal, which is pretty popular. Um, and Funny Junk is a content aggregator site where users post funny images they find on the web. Those images almost always are created by other people and they're rehosted on Funny Junk. Um, and many of those images happen to be oatmeal comics. Some had the attribution cut off. Some had other problems with it. Big, huge ordeal. And what basically happened was 10 months ago, Inman said some mean things about Funny Junk in his comic. Funny Junk fired back in a less than elegant way. And as a result, um, the uh, situation blew up. But it really didn't go anywhere or do anything. Largely because Inman kind of decided this whole thing wasn't really worth his time and just dropped it. Um, yeah, may not have been the best move though because what happened uh, earlier this week was, or should say earlier this month, was that Funny Junk hired the attorney Charles Carrion, 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 I'm not still not sure on that, but anyways, hired an attorney who sent them a, a cease and desist letter that demanded that um, Inman remove allegedly defamatory comments from his site and also pay them $20,000 in damages. Um, Inman fired back by not capitulating, but instead saying that he was going to attempt to raise the money through an auction on Indiegogo, and that's important in a second here. Um, and basically that if he raised the money he was going to take a photo of it along with a, like I said a salacious image of that he had drawn for Funny Junkin for their attorney and he was going to send the image and the mon the photo of the money but the actual cash was going to go to two charities he had chosen I think it was the uh, American Cancer Society and the uh, it was a wildlife fund I'm trying to remember what it was off the top of my head but I can't but anyways the uh, the um, fundraiser went gangbusters, raised to twenty thousand dollars in sixty four minutes, went well over a hundred thousand dollars in one day, and it's still skyrocketing up. It's it's gone absolutely gangbusters, and the story has gotten a lot of mainstream media attention. You're I'm reading about it on NPR, MSNBC, it's all over the place. The story's being covered, and it's obvious that Charles Carrion here is an attorney way out of his depth. I mean, way, way, way out of his depth. Doesn't know how to handle this at all. Not that there is much he can do at this point, but clearly doesn't know how to handle it. Now, when all this went down, I was kind of waiting to see what Funny Junk's response would be, and I had two visions in mind. One was I thought, well, they would just, you know, try to approach this with an open hand and an open heart and try to resolve this and put an end to this in an amicable, peaceful way. The other side of me thought that they would double down on this. They would ignore the aforementioned uh, fundraiser and say, well, you know, that fundraising is great and all, but, you know, there's still a demand letter here, and if you don't approach us in good faith and try to negotiate a settlement, we will sue. Those were the two options, kind of the uh, nice guy jerk uh, system I saw to it. Um... Unfortunately, that's not what Carrion decided to do. He has apparently written Indiegogo, and so far it's been unsuccessful. But he is demanding that Indiegogo shut down the fundraiser, saying it is a violation of Indiegogo's terms of service and is seeking to get it closed. And I don't know if it is a violation or not. Didn't read Indiegogo's terms of service for this video, but even if it is, I think um, obviously any violation would probably be a technicality at this point. And the real reason he wants it shut down has absolutely nothing to do um, 
with it being a violation of the TOS. It has everything to do with it's an embarrassment to him and to his client. You know, my problem is this. Whenever um, lawyers do dumb things, I tend to give them the benefit of the doubt. And the reason is this. Attorneys have a responsibility to represent the interests of their clients. That's their job. They are paid and hired to represent the interests of their clients. And so long as the interest of their client isn't illegal or highly immoral or would get them in trouble with the bar, they pretty much have to go along with it, um, even if they maybe don't agree with it politically, philosophically, or whatever. And that's what happens a lot of times. You see attorneys who go along with things they disagree with personally, and this is how attorneys also get on opposite sides of the same issue, uh, seemingly arguing completely counterpoints over the course of their career. Um, I try to give the benefit of the doubt, but now there's no benefit. Carry on is a moron. He's stupid. He has just done something absolutely daft, and I hope he doesn't succeed for his sake, because if he does succeed and get his Indiegogo sh um, fundraiser shut down, the hell he will bring down upon himself will be incredible. What has taken place now, the emails he's gotten, the, 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 the jokes made about him, you know, everything that's been said so far will pale in comparison to what happens if that auction is shut down. It will pale in comparison. What I would do if I were carrying on in this situation, I would donate to it and make a public display of donating to it, saying I believe in these causes as well. And then you have to decide and talk with your client about this one if you're going to continue fighting this case or drop it. That's something you've got to work on with your client. Say, you know, you've got to remove yourself from this equation as an attorney. You're just here to represent your client, and now the focal point is on him, and he doesn't know how to deal with that. And it's, it's really frustrating because he touts being this big internet attorney, and yet he's obviously clearly unfamiliar with the Streisand effect. So please, Mr. Caron, if you are successful in shutting down this auction, go into hiding. Do something, because the internet will not forgive and will not forget, and everything that has happened to date will just become a million times worse. I mean, this is not how you resolve this. This is this is how you make things much, much, much worse for yourself and for your client. Um, there's just no way this was a good idea. So anyways, that's the quick update there. A quick update of 7 minutes 30 seconds in. But I really, really hope he's not successful. I, I, if he is uncomfortable with the attention he has now, he would be way more uncomfortable if it succeeds. So I'll keep you posted on what I find out and what I learn and any news. In the meantime, though, this is Jonathan Bailey, in disbelief, signing off.